Thank you all of you. So myself, Professor T M Diwakar, working as Assistant Professor in A D C Department in Sharad Institute of Technology College of Engineering, Hyderabad. So today we are going to cover the Constitution of India. So today we are going to cover what is Constitution anyway. What is the need of Constitution? What are the framing of Constitution of India? what is preamble to constitution of india what is the constitution of india what are the main characteristics of constitution of india and finally we come to the conclusions let us see one by one so what is constitution anyway <coughs> so almost uh, everything we do is uh, governed by some set of rules and there are the rules of for the games for social club for adults in workplace so there are also rules imposed by morality and custom and that plays very important role to tell us about uh, what we should and what we should not do for example in the game of soccer the referee has a full authority to enforce the laws and rules of the games on the players means suppose uh, a player uh, if he do something against the rule or the against the law then a referee uh, he has to take the actions uh, like uh, uh, to punish something or to send off a player out of the ground so these are the some images what we should do and what we should not do so this is in the third if in the first image it is showing that what we should have to do in the second image what we should not do and in the third that referee is giving warning to the players there are also the rules made by the legislations means there are some rules made by lok sabha some rules made by the rajya sabha in india and these are called as the laws so we need law in society because our society can regulate and work properly and so they are designed <coughs> to protect us and our country and our property Uh, and to ensure that everyone in society behaves the way that community expects to so law tell us what to expect as a consequence of our actions so without law there would be a complete anarchy so these are the images some uh, images showing the laws in generally the constitution is the supreme law of land all other laws have to conform the constitutions and in the constitution contains the laws concerning the government and its relation with the peoples so therefore the constitution is concerned with the two aspects main aspects one is the constitution one is the relation between the different levels of the governments so and the second one is the relation between the government and the citizens so in the figure shows on the left hand side so there are the different levels of the governments which is the aspect of the constitution and in the second there is a relation between the government and the citizens of the india not citizens of the world or india next one what is the technical definition of the constitution so constitution it is a set of fundamental principles or it is established precedence according to which a state or other organization is governed so these rules together make up is called as a constitute 
when these principles are written down into single collections or a set of legal documents those documents may be said to compromise the written constitution or the document containing laws and rules which determines and describes the form of government the relationship between the citizens and government is called as a constitution so this is the technical definition about the constitution means the document in containing the laws and the rules and the laws and rules determines and describes the form of government the relationship between the citizens and the government is called as a constitution <coughs> there is another depression and observation of patrick henry so the constitution is not an instrument see it is the definitions by observation of patrick henry in 1736 and 1799 his duration during his duration the constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the peoples it is an instrument for the people to restrain the government so this is a definition made by patrick henry next uh, our next point is why do we need the constitutions what is the need of constitutions why it is required so in generally there are four points see here we do we need a constitution to govern the country properly to maintain the country properly to work the country properly second point is the constitution defines the nature of political system of the country why because by using the rules by using the laws of the constitutions we can define the nature of political system of the country sometimes we feel strongly about an issue then might go against our larger interests and the constitution helps us guard against this means the constitution protect us and our properties and third one all the three organs of the government means executive legislature and judiciary the functions within the constitutions and all the three organs of the government including ordinary citizens derive their powers and authority from the constitutions if they act against it it is unconstitutional and unlawful so constitution is required to have authoritatively allocations of the power functions and also to restrict them within its limit so there are the following functions as we need the constitutions the first function of the constitution is to provide a set of basic rules that allows for minimal coordinations against the members of the society the second function of the constitution is to specify who has the power to make decision in the society it decides how the government will be constituted third one the third function of the constitution is to set some limits on what government can impose on its citizens and these limits are fundamentally in the sense that government it may ever trespass them fourth one is the constitution is to enable the government to fulfill the separation of the society and creates the condition for a just society our third point is the framing of constitution of india dr sachidanand singha was the first president that is the temporary of the constitution assembly when it met on december 9th 1946 later on dr rajendra prasad became the president of constitution assembly 
and Dr. Ambedkar became the chairman of its drafting committee on December. Eleven, nineteen forty-six. <coughs> the first president, Dr. Sachidananda Sinha, on the left, in the left figure, left side figure, in the middle, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, and uh, on the right hand side, Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar. This is the first day of the Constitution Assembly. From the right, B. J. K. R. and Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel. K. Munshi is seated behind the Patel. So, for the time being, till the constitution was made, India would be governed in accordance with the Government of India Act, nineteen thirty-five. The assembly met in session open to the public. For one sixty-six days, and spread over a period of two years, <coughs> eleven month and eighteen days before adopting the constitution, it was finally passed and accepted on twenty-six November nineteen forty-nine. In all the two eighty-four members. of assembly signed the official copies of the indian constitution after many deliberations and some modifications over 111 plenary sessions in 114 days the 308 members of the assembly signed two copies of the documents each one in hindi and english on 24 January nineteen fifty. Same day, the assembly anonymously elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad as the president of India, which came into the effect on January twenty six nineteen fifty, known and celebrated as the Republican Day of India. So this is the Republican Day celebration on twenty sixth January at New Delhi, India. Next point is what are the preambles to the Constitution of India? <coughs> the preambles to the Constitution of India is a brief introductory statement that sets out the guideline, guiding purpose and principle of the documents. <coughs> Sorry, we, the people of India, having Solemnly resolved to constitution India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic, and to ensure to all its citizens justice, social, economic, and political liberty of thoughts, expressions, belief, faith, and worship. the equality of status and of opportunities and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation in your constitution assembly this 26th day of the november 1949 do hereby adopt and act and give to ourselves this constitution the first word of the preamble that we the people signifies that power is ultimately vested in the hands of the people of india so far the preambles has been amended only once in 1976 by 42 amendment which inserted the words socialism secularism and integrity a brief descriptions of these concepts are as follow first one is uh, sovereignty that is sovereign it means free to follow internal external policies 
second one is the secular it means no particular religion is preferred third one is the sociality it means no concentration of the power and money fourth one is the democratic means rule by elected representative of the people of india fifth one is a republic it means no room for hereditary ruler or monarch so these are the some rights to freedom of the religion the preamble page along with other pages of the first and original book of the constitution of india was designed means was art and decorated that is a frame solely by renowned painter bihar shakla so this is the first page and it is a original book of constitution of india next one what is constitution of india the constitution of india in general the constitution of india is considered to be a supreme law of country as it puts forth the framework of fundamental political principles it establishes the structure procedure powers and duties of the government and mention the fundamental rights directive principles what are the duties of the citizens and the constitution declares india as a sovereign socialist democratic and republican with the parliamentary form of government the indian constitution shows the federal as well as the unitary system what is meant by the federal system the powers are divided and are shared between the state and the central governments what is the indian system <coughs> the power concentrated in the central government with weak state government so these are the structure of the constitution of india consist of a one preamble 25 parts containing 45 articles 12 schedules two appendices and 97 amended amendments although it is federal in nature it also has a strong unitary bias so the basic principle of the constitution of india is a careful study of constitution will show that there are at least eight basics principle which are embodied in it and which form the foundation of the political system in india so these are popular sovereignty socialism secularism fundamental rights directive principle of the state policies judicial independence federalism and cabinet government the fundamental rights are different from other rights available to us while the ordinary legal rights are protected and enforced by ordinary laws the fundamental rights are protected and guaranteed by the constitution of india and the constitution of india recognizes the certain basic fundamental rights for every citizen of india such as rights to equality rights to freedom rights to freedom of the religion rights against the exploitation cultural and educational rights rights to con- constitutional remedies and the ordinary rights may be changed by legislative by ordinary process of laws of by making but a fundamental rights may only be changed by amending the constitution itself besides this no organs of the governments 
can act in the manner that murders them any any pregnants of the fundamental rights can be challenged by any citizen of india in the country of law the constitution of india also prescribes some fundamental duties on every citizen of india the fundamental duties that is the in article number 51a that is a part 4 these fundamental rights have been provided at the cost of some fundamental duties and they are considered as a duties that must be and should be performed by every citizen of india these fundamental duties are defined as first one a charge be the duty of every citizen of india to abide by the constitution to uphold and protect the sovereignty unity and integrity of india to cherish and follow the noble ideas which inspired our nation struggles for freedom to defend the countries and render national service when called of called upon to do so to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood to value and preserve the rich heritage of our composite cultural to protect and improve the national environment to develop the scientific temper humanism and spirit of inquiry and perform reform reform to safeguard public property and to abjure violence the rights to constitution remedies the indian supreme court and the election commissioner are organized as the bedrock of indian democracy these two bodies stand up to the enormous powers that the constitution invests in the central government in general and to the unbridled powers of the indian prime minister in particular checks and balances the checks and balances are that are provided by the constitution also smooth out the strained relation between the central government and the states by limiting the central government's ability to interference the states affairs usually either the state government or a political parties may file an appeal or read petitions in the supreme court against a policy or practices of union or state although india's constitution follow the british parliament system it is the constitution and not the parliament of the india that design the supreme as in the united states the indian court interpret the constitution and add add sorry the word is wrong here the law passed by the parliament although the parliament has the authority to amend the constitution the india courts have made the sure that the parliament does not change its fundamental structure which guarantees economical opportunities social justice and pub and religious and political freedom to all its citizens although political corruptions and coercions are rampant in india as they are in other developing countries the countries are judiciary guarantees of the india's freedom the constitution of india has some distinct and unique feature as compared to the other constitution to the world as dr b r ambedkar the chairman drafting committee puts it the prems had tried to accumulate and accommodate the best feature of our other 
constitutions keeping in view the peculiar problems and needs of the our country so main characteristics of the constitution of india are longest written constitution partly rigid and partly flexible the democratic republic republic parliament system of government a federation of fundamental rights directive principles on the state policies fundamental duties secular state and independent judiciary single citizenship so finally we come to conclusion as a constitution symbolize independence of the country a framework and structure of the governance of free country are provided in the constitution the constituent assembly prepared the draft of the constitution by keeping the objective resolutions as the backdrop which reflected the aspirations of the people of india the framing of constitutions was completed on november 26 1949 and the constitution assembly formally adopted the new constitutions the constitution came into force with the effect from 26 january 1950 the constitution begins with the preamble which declares india's to be a sovereign socialty secular democratic republic the preambles also mention the goal of securing justice liberty and equality for all its citizens and promotions of national unity and integrity on the basis of fraternity among the people assuring dignities of the individual so these are the conclusions again the constitution of india has a several distinctive features it is the lengthiest constitution in the world and it is the combination of rigidity and flexibility the constitution provides for the quasi federal it means the federal setup where the despite having two clear set of governments central and the state more powers are given to the central government and the setup with the stronger center there are clear division of powers between the central and the state the supreme court of india is the apex court of india which will resolve the disputes between the center and the state or between the states india has a parliamentary document democracy the council of ministry headed by the prime minister enjoys the real powers and is responsible for the parliament the indian constitution provides for the fundamental rights which are justifiable 10 fundamental duties also been added to the constitutions the directive principle of the state policies give a concrete shape to the welfare concept so these are the conclusions thank you